Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And in this special episode for May 11th, 2020, we're going to look a little bit deeper into the Bitcoin halvening and we're going to explain it because the Bitcoin halvening is actually happening today in a matter of hours. So whether you're watching this uh, broadcast, watching this little video on May 11th, or whether you've watched it after the halvening has actually occurred, we're hoping to give you the information that you need to know. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. Hey, it really helps us out with the YouTube algorithms. It'll help this channel grow a lot. So I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And when it comes to investing in cryptocurrency, you need to understand the risk that you're taking. This disclaimer right here, I recommend that you pause the video, read it in detail, understand it, because cryptocurrency is risky even though it has a potential for great profits. So let's take a look at the Bitcoin market before we get into it. At this moment, it is 6.28 a.m. Central Standard Time. The price of Bitcoin just changed to $8,850.33. Um, that's a 1.6% increase in the last 24 hours. And the Bitcoin dominance is hovering at 67.9%. So what that means is, is when you look at the total amount of value of Bitcoin, when you multiply the current price by the number of Bitcoin in existence, um, and compare that to the rest of the cryptocurrency market, uh, the Bitcoin market value is 67.88% of the total market value of all cryptocurrencies combined. And so Bitcoin has tremendous dominance. It's been floating at the 68% number. And one of the reasons why this value is important is if you're comparing Bitcoin to, rest, to all the rest of the cryptocurrency market, all of the what's called altcoins, um, when this number increases, that means the price of Bitcoin is going up while the rest of the altcoins are either staying steady or possibly even going down, but they're not going up at the same rate that Bitcoin is going up. And when this number is going down, that means that the value of the altcoins, all of the rest of the cryptocurrency market, is increasing faster than Bitcoin. And since Bitcoin has such a high market dominance, it's valuable to watch the comparison between Bitcoin and the rest of the market because it helps you understand maybe there's a better place that I should have my money. It may help you decide what percentage of your money you're going to put into what cryptocurrency. Uh, a lot of people use it for a lot of different reasons. Personally, I have a tendency to keep my cryptocurrency divided in equal portions among a handful of them. Um, and so I like to watch this just because um, it helps me understand is altcoins as, as a whole going up faster than Bitcoin or vice versa, is Bitcoin going up faster? So I use it more for reference than for actually deciding, oh, I'm going to put more money into this and less money into that. All right, so let's talk about the Bitcoin halvening. The Bitcoin halving will take place sometime in May 2020. Well, that sometime is today, May 11th, 2020. Um, it will occur at this moment in seven hours, 56 minutes and 48 seconds. And so what is the halving? How will it affect the price and what does it mean for miners and the cryptocurrency long-term prospects? We're going to dig into it right now. The having sounds like a horror movie about an axe murderer, but it's actually a nickname for one of the most hotly anticipated events in Bitcoin history. So what they mean by in Bitcoin history, it happens about every four years and this will be the third having. So sometime in May, the number of Bitcoins entering circulation every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes, there's what's known as block rewards. 
And so the guys that are out there doing Bitcoin mining, every 10 minutes they create a brand new block and they ensure that that block is a valid block. In other words, somebody's not spending Bitcoin they don't have or they're not spending Bitcoin twice where they, they spent it over here with Fred and now they're spending it over here with Susan. They're making sure that they're not spending the same Bitcoin more than once, that the, as they spend it, it comes out of their address. And so there's a lot of different things that the Bitcoin miners provide that includes security and making sure that everything works. And as a result, the Bitcoin miners get paid in what's known as block rewards and they get paid with brand new Bitcoin. And so this Bitcoin block reward is how new Bitcoin is created. Now today, that reward is getting cut in half. And so uh, right now, at the time of this recording, the miners are getting rewarded 12.5 Bitcoin every time they create a new block. But after the halvening, that gets cut to half so that they'll only get 6.25 Bitcoin for every block that they actually mine. And so that reduces the supply of Bitcoin significantly and it may make things a little bit tougher for the miners, but a lot of the miners know in advance, you know, what it is, how much, you know, they, they know all their costs, they know all their numbers. So this halving is a milestone that's easy to see coming because it happens once every four years and has happened twice before. So on this article, we're looking at a Coindesk article. There is a great video. This is a really good video. I'm not going to show it because of copyright issues, um, but I will provide you a link so that if you want to see this video on uh, Coindesk's website, you'll be able to navigate directly to this article that I'm sharing with you and you'll be able to watch this video. And so if you want to take another angle another if you want to learn more about the happening this is a great video to watch so what is the happening we've talked a little bit about that already new bitcoins are created and produced as rewards by miners who use expensive electronic equipment to earn or mine the new bitcoin so it used to be back in the day when bitcoin was first created anybody could use a, a computer any laptop any desktop, any regular uh, computer, whether it was a Windows computer or an Apple computer, could run software on the computer to actually mine Bitcoin. But over time, the, the difficulty for creating Bitcoin has increased dramatically. Now you could still use the same software program on your laptop or on your computer and it would still mine Bitcoin. It's just that it's gotten to a point that instead of making dollars you're only going to make pennies for the time it takes to actually mine it for a lot of people the amount of um, money they spend on that electricity is greater than the actual bitcoin they're going to receive from mining it so every 210,000 blocks or roughly every four years the total number of bitcoin that miners potentially win is halved and so this chart here, let me scroll it so, whoops, wrong way, so that we can actually see the chart a little bit more completely. Just one, ah, it went a little, all right, we're gonna, that's perfect. So this orange line here is the amount of Bitcoin rewards. And so you can see when it first started that, that the people who were mining Bitcoin got 50 Bitcoin every time a new Bitcoin was created. And then after the first halving, it dropped down to 25 Bitcoin. And then after the second halving, it dropped down to 12.5 Bitcoin. And then after this halving, it's going to go down to 6.25 Bitcoin every time they create a new block. Now this line shows you how much Bitcoin has actually been created. Now the reason why this line flattens right around 21 million is because 21 million is the maximum amount of Bitcoin that will ever be created. So the software that manages Bitcoin, that software has a program in it and that program will prevent them from ever creating more than 21 million Bitcoin. And so you can see that the amount of Bitcoin rose significantly during the first four years up to 10 million. 
And then the next four years, it hit 16 million. And so you can see that the halvening cut that down dramatically. And then the one after that pushed it to 18 million. And the one that we're dealing with today has pushed it just shy of 20 million uh, Bitcoins in existence. Now, when you talk about how many Bitcoins are actually in existence, one of the things that you want to also consider is that even though there's almost 20 million Bitcoins in existence, not all of those Bitcoins can actually be used. Because back in the day, when people were first running uh, Bitcoin on laptops and other devices, some of those laptops have been destroyed and the Bitcoin that those laptops were holding are completely lost forever. Um, there's other situations where people just had a set of private keys and they may have had a thousand Bitcoin, but in the early days, a thousand Bitcoin was only worth a few dollars. And so they may have lost those private keys. And if they did lose the private keys, they also lost access to that Bitcoin. And so even though the Bitcoin still exists without the private keys, the numbers on the private keys are so complex that you would have to run a computer for hundreds of years in order to try and guess what that private key actually is in order to gain access into those cryptocurrency accounts. And so there's a bunch of Bitcoin. There's actually, uh, there's a lot of different estimates. I don't know the true number. Nobody really knows the true number. People talk about two, three, four million Bitcoin uh, that has been lost and will no longer ever be used even though they're still counted as part of the 20 million Bitcoin. And so when that happens, that just makes the existing supply of Bitcoin uh, even more rare. So let's talk about this a little bit more. In 2009, the system started at 50 coins mined every 10 minutes. Two halvings later, which is right now, you get the miners are mining for 12.5 Bitcoins every 10 minutes. Um, but in, the, in a few hours, that's going to drop down from 12.5 down to 6.25. Now, the process will end with a total of 21 million coins, and that will probably happen somewhere around the year 2140. So from today, that actually gives us another 120 years before the last Bitcoin is actually mined. And so you may ask the question, well, what are the miners going to do when the last Bitcoin is mined? Well, they'll still make money, but they'll make their money from the... The, the transaction fees for moving Bitcoin from point A to point B. So every time you move Bitcoin, there's what's today is a very small fee. But as we get closer to the halvening being finished and having 21 million coins, those fees will start increasing so that the miners continue to make money. So that the, the network, the Bitcoin network itself is continued to be protected and to continue function correctly. And so it's actually a really, really smart uh, process. The whole thing has been really put together very, very well. Shortly after releasing the Bitcoin white paper, uh, Nakamoto summarized the various ways they've chosen the monetary policy, the schedule by which miners receive block rewards, could play out. Pondering the circumstances on which it could lead to deflation when a customer's purchasing power increases or inflation when, a, when prices and goods and services purchased with cur currency increase. So inflation means the money you hold is worth less, but deflation means the money you hold increases. And Satoshi Nakamoto is a, a pseudonym for an anonymous person who are a group of people. We don't know if it's a single person or if it's several persons, um, but the Satoshi Nakamoto and his team, because um, even though Satoshi Nakamoto was the person who was created the white paper, wrote the first part of the cryptocurrency code, since then there have been other people that have been getting involved and, hand, and helping out with building and creating uh, Bitcoin in particular, as well as many, many other cryptocurrencies. Anyway, their intention, their purpose was to create a currency that increases in value rather than decreases in value. Um, whenever one of the central banks around the world prints more money, they create inflation, which means 
that those particular that particular currency is worth less. And Bitcoin was built programmatically with software code so that its value would increase as it becomes more and more scarce. And the scarcity causes its value to rise while central banks are printing out huge amounts of money in order to deal with things like the pandemic. And as a result of them printing lots and lots of money, it makes the value of that currency go down or it's called inflation where you know when you when you go out and buy bread today a loaf of bread might be a dollar tomorrow that loaf of bread might be two or three dollars because of inflation not everything costs a little bit more and because it costs a little bit more uh, the value of that dollar buys less and so Bitcoin was deliberately designed to create uh, uh, greater scarcity so that it was more and more valuable. Unlike the monetary policy of state-issued currencies which unfold through a political process and human institutions, Bitcoin's monetary process is written into code shared across the network. Changing that code would require an immense output of coordination and agreement across the community of Bitcoin users. Excuse me. have a little tickle in my throat. So unlike most national currencies we're familiar with, like dollars and euros, Bitcoin was designed with a fixed supply and predictable inflation schedule. There will only be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. This predetermined numbers makes them scarce And it's that scarcity alongside with their utility that creates their market value or makes the price of it go up. Crypto wallet company Blockchain wrote in a blog post ahead of the 2016 halvening. Another unique aspect of Bitcoin is Nakamoto's programmed the block reward to decrease over time. This is another way in which it differs from the norm of modern financial systems where central banks control the money supply. In stark contrast to Bitcoin's having block reward, the supply of the dollar has roughly tripled since 2000. So the number of dollars in existence in 2020 is triple the number of dollars that were in existence in 2000. And that is made, that is what's caused inflation. That's why the dollar is not worth as much today as it was back in 2000. So how does the halvening influence Bitcoin's price? So let's take a look at this. This is a historical chart. Now, if you remember from my uh, disclaimer at the beginning of the video, it talks about how history does not necessarily repeat and that just because you saw something happen in the past does not necessarily mean it'll happen in the future. And so while it's unknown today how the happening that's happening today will actually influence the price of Bitcoin, there's a lot of expectation out there. A lot of people are expecting that this happening that's happening today will be similar to the previous two happenings that happened before. And so you can see here back in 2012, the price dipped just before This is 365 days before the halvening. This line here represents the first halvening. And 365 days before the first halvening, you could see the price dropping and then it started to climb again. And it did some climbing before the halvening, but look at the amount of increase, the the way the price skyrocketed, it went parabolic after the halvening. Now you need to keep in mind that this chart is what's called a logarithmic chart. And so the price right here is $2 right at this 365 days before the happening. But this price here is at $1,000. <clears> and so <clears throat> if each one of these marks was a $2 mark, the $1,000 price would be sky high. It would be off this chart completely um, because you would have to have 500 of these lines just to get to the $1,000 mark. And so the by using a logarithmic chart, which you know you can see here it goes from $2 to $5 to 10, 20, 50, 100, 
200, 500, and then 1,000, um, all they've done is they've basically just compressed this line. But this line should be almost vertical through, through this entire time period. And so 365 days after the halving, the price went up 8,000%. Before the halving, the price went up 385%. So that's just dramatic. Now here's the second halving that happened in 2016. And you can see for 365 days before the halving, the price went up some, but it only went up 142%. And then after the halving, and it says 200, oh, I see what's going on. So after the halving, the price went from around $500. This is around the $500 price mark. It went all the way up to $2,000, but everybody knows that in December of 2017, the price hit a new all-time high of $20,000. And so <clears throat> during the first 365 days after the halving, the price did go up 284%, but it was the next six months where it absolutely skyrocketed from the price of around 2,000 to a price of around 20,000 and actually did closer to, to a thousand percent increase. And so overall for the, for the 18 months after the halving, um, on the second halving, the price actually went up 1,284% during that period of time. And so between these two, 1,284% and 8,000%, you can see that the halvings can be an opportunity to make a really good investment, to make some you know, really nice money off of the, off of the event of the halving. And so a lot of people are expecting a similar uh, reaction to the price of Bitcoin and to the halving after this one that's about to happen. A lot of people are expecting the price to go up uh, pretty rapidly. So the second halving in 2016 was highly anticipated, as is the one approaching now, with Coindesk running a live blog of the event and blockchain.com putting out a countdown each halving has encouraged vigorous speculation about how the event would affect the price of Bitcoin. On July 16, 2016, the day of the second halving, the price dropped 10% to about $610, but then shot back up to where it was before. There was little evidence the sudden reduction in Bitcoin's minting rate had a long-term impact on the price. At the time, Coindesk Donnelly, Jacob Donnelly, went so far as to call the event uh, a boring vindication. Now, while the immediate impact of the price of Bitcoin was small, the market did tally a gradual increase over the year following the second halving. Some argue this increase was a delayed result of the halving. The theory is that when the supply of Bitcoin decreases, the demand for Bitcoin will stay the same, pushing the price up. If that theory is correct, then we could observe a similar price increase for future halvings, including the one scheduled for today, not this year. Others argue that given the predictability of Bitcoin's halving schedule, the change, this change in the mining rate is unlikely to shift the price Traders have long known the, blockchain, the Bitcoin block reward will decrease, giving them ample time to prepare. Now, while a lot of analysts have speculated that the Bitcoin halving is not going to affect the price, I do not agree with them. And the reason I don't agree with them is when you look at the amount of people who are searching the term Bitcoin halving on like Google Trends or even in Twitter or even in the Chinese version of Twitter, we have seen those search terms explode. And so based on the amount of people searching for Bitcoin having, it looks like we're going to see a dramatic increase in the number of people who actually own Bitcoin. And when you look at the, the blockchain uh, analysis and you actually analyze the actual blockchain out there, we have seen a dramatic increase in the number of brand new addresses that are holding Bitcoin for the first time over the last six months. Um, those numbers have just been, it's been double and triple 
and quadruple the number of addresses in the months prior to the halving. And so people are searching for the Bitcoin halving and they're, they're actually investing in Bitcoin for the very first time. And so while I don't think the, the halving is actually priced into today's price, um, because we have too many people that are entering the market for the first time because they're just now hearing about the halving and hearing about the price, uh, the potential price going up. And that will be something that I believe continues to occur over the next 18 months or so. I believe that it'll take somewhere around, well, just like the previous halvings. Uh, the first happening, it took about 365 days to hit a brand new all-time high that was dramatically above. I mean, we're talking 8,000% above the previous price before the halving. And then here we see uh, after, and that was after 12 months. So that one went very quick. And this one took about 18 months to get to here, which was about a 1,300% a, a increase. And so... It may take more time and it may happen very quickly. Only time will tell. Um, but I believe we're going to see a dramatic increase in the number of people actually investing in, in Bitcoin, especially when you look at what's happening in China, India, and South Africa. When it comes to cryptocurrency, it looks like all three of those countries are starting to wake up in mass towards cryptocurrency. And, you know, all three of those countries, India, China and South Africa all have more than 1 billion people in each of those countries. You know, <coughs> they have like 1.4 billion, 1.3 billion, 1.2 billion. And so you're talking somewhere in the ballpark of 4 billion people that are, that are becoming more and more and more interested in cryptocurrency. And the volume of those people could definitely push the price up more and more. As there's greater demand, that's the demand versus the supply that pushes it up. So we know that the supply will decrease in a matter of hours. And if the demand continues to rise, we will continue to see the price increase. So again, this is just my opinion and uh, I am not a financial advisor and what I've given you is not financial advice. I've given you my opinion, I'm telling you the very same thing I tell my mom. And so, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Did I not explain anything very well? Be sure to leave comments below on the YouTube channel, and I would love to interact with you. And if you disagree with anything, then I say, hey, look, you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share that information together, we're going to grow smarter together. And so I want to grow smarter together with you. So please feel free to share that information that you know. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.